We Democrats believe our Senator from New Jersey. I understand we're in a quorum call. We are. Request permission to vitiate the quorum. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you very much. Mr. President, I rise today because earlier on this day, the Trump administration and Attorney General Jeff Sessions rescinded the Department of Justice's policy known as the Cole Memo. The Cole Memo is a policy issued under the Obama administration instructing prosecutors to shift away from a focus on nonviolent marijuana crimes and towards more serious crimes that threaten our communities. This memo was a critical step in a move in the right direction undoing some of the catastrophic damage that has been caused by the failed war on drugs. It is a step forward for the federal government in mending our broken drug policies that have so hurt our nation in so many ways. I believe it is a step forward that the vast majority of Americans who believe the war on drugs failed agree with it's a step forward that improves Americans' safety, saves money, and better aligns our laws with our most fundamental values of fairness, equality, and justice. But yet today, Attorney General Jeff Sessions has instructed the Department of Justice to not just double down on failed policy, but to turn back the clock and undermine the well-being of our country. The policy change actually goes against what Jeff Sessions promised elected officials in this body before his confirmation. We've heard already from the other Corey in the Senate, Republican Senator Cory Gardner, that he had a commitment from the Attorney General that before his confirmation that this is not what he would do. And so this is an attack on our most sacred ideals and the very purpose of the Department of Justice, which is to protect Americans, to elevate ideals of justice and to do right by people. It is a failure of this administration who said, as our president did during his campaign, that he would honor what states are doing. It's a betrayal of our attorney general who gave a commitment to a Republican, at least one Republican member of this body but most significantly, it is hurting, it will hurt America. It ignores the fact that there is a growing bipartisan consensus that the war on drug has failed. It sacrificed our critical, urgently needed resources in our communities, violating our values, destroying families, and it's failed to make us safer. Let me walk through those four points one by one. First, this massive waste of public resources urgently needed in other areas. We have spent in the last four decades in this country so much on these policies. At the same time that we're disinvesting from public education, from our public colleges, disinvesting from investments in innovation, investments in science and research, investments in our, research, in, our, in our research, but yet have spent trillions of dollars in this failed war on drugs. We have created a nation that says we are the land of the free, but we are the incarceration nation on the planet Earth, with one in every four incarcerated people on this planet are imprisoned here in the United States of America. One out of every three incarcerated women on the planet are incarcerated right here in the United States of America. Between the time of 1990 and 2005, we've devoted so much of our resources to building new prisons. During that time, we were building a new prison in the United States, one out of every 10 days to keep up with the massive amount of people who are being driven into our prisons. One new prison every 10 days as our infrastructure crumbled, as our roads and bridges crumbled. We've sidelined the resources of our law enforcement officials. I know this, having been a former mayor. The precious time, resources, and energy of our law enforcement officials, we've sidelined the potential of mil millions of Americans, redirecting them into marijuana enforcement. And for what? At a time when we have real issues to deal with in our country, a drug epidemic, at a time that people cannot afford treatment, that there are waiting lists for treatment because we don't have the resources to deal with this opi opioid epidemic, 
are instead using our resources to enforce marijuana laws. The Center for Disease Control, the CDC, reported last year that 91 Americans die every single day from an opioid epidemic in this country. Meanwhile, according to FBI data, from 2014, from 2014, one American is arrested every single minute for marijuana possession. One American every minute for marijuana possession. That's about 1,700 Americans being arrested every day for marijuana possession. That's police resources. That's resources to put people in jail, to hold them, to feed them. Court resources, all that could be used better and invested in our society to deal with the ravages of the opioid epidemic. epidemic. Police resources that are being used for marijuana possession that could be being used to chase after violent offenders. This is somehow crazy that we think we could arrest our way out of a problem. Doubling down on these failed efforts makes no sense. It is a massive waste of our precious resources as a society. But number two, it's also perpetuating injustice in our country. We believe that everyone in this nation should have equal justice under the law. Those are the words written on the Supreme Court. But we know this war on drugs has not been a war on drugs. It's been a war on people. And not all people, but certain people, the most vulnerable people. It has been a war on poor people. It has been a war on mentally ill people. It has been a war on people of color. The unequal application of marijuana laws has created a justice system where outcomes are often more dependent upon race and class than dependent upon guilt or innocence. It is privileged in privileged communities and places all across this country. Marijuana, are, uh, are, marijuana is being used with little fear of consequences, openly spoken about, joked about, with little understanding of the painful fact that the war on drugs in America has scarcely affected their lives, but the war on drugs, because of the unequal application of the laws, is affecting people in other communities. I've seen this personally. I went to Stanford and to Yale, and I watched drug use being done, openly marijuana use. There's no FBI investigations, no sting operations set up to go after the privileged in this country. There are people in this body that openly admit to using marijuana with no consequence. But if you're poor or vulnerable in the United States of America, they're coming after you. And there will be consequences. I've had countless conversations with elected officials about their own personal drug use because it's outrageous to me, this outrageous hypocrisy that they could flaunt drug rules while poor people and people of color suffer as a result of our marijuana laws. The facts are clear. The disproportionate enforcement of marijuana laws has helped to create a system of massive injustice in our country, and, and it is obvious there is no difference in America between blacks and whites for using marijuana, no difference between blacks and whites for selling marijuana, but blacks are 3.7 times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession than a white person is. This is a targeting of certain communities, a targeting of low-income people who are having their lives devastated by this unequal application of the law. And Jeff Sessions' announcement today will make the problem worse. And people don't understand what it means if you get a felony conviction for marijuana possession. Most people have no understanding that this is a lifetime sentence in America. It not only affects the individual's ability to get a job, you can't get a Pell Grant if you have a felony conviction for marijuana usage, which many people in this body have done. You can't get business licenses for a felony conviction for marijuana. You can't get food stamps. You can't get public housing. It devastates individuals economically, but it devastates their families as well. 
It destroys the lives of children who suddenly the earner in their family, who are guilty of no more serious crime than some of my colleagues, suddenly they have to pick up the pieces after one of their parents is sent away to prison. Missing one day of work, two days of work, often means losing your job, not being able to make your car payment, not being able to make the rental payment. We know children who had a father in prison or arrested are more than five times more likely than their peers to be expelled or suspended from schools. This marijuana enforcement is devastating families, which are the fundamental building blocks of communities, and it is devastating communities. These laws weaken our overall economic health. One study found that if it weren't for mass incarceration explosion as a result of the war on drugs, the poverty rate in this country would be 20% lower. We have inflicted a self-inflicted wound by wasting resources, police resources, and the financial resources of this country, and we have taken another self-inflicted wound by destroying families and communities economically. But it also has hurt our safety as a country. There are communities all across this nation who worry about the safety of their children, the safety of their families, the safety of their neighborhood. And by taking these critical resources away from law enforcement, this is a sacrifice of our efforts to make communities safe and strong. In 2016, more Americans were arrested for marijuana possession than for all violent crimes combined. How many unsolved murders are there? How many unsolved assaults? How much violence and crime should our police be investigating as opposed to dealing with marijuana prohibition? Fewer police resources, fewer officers. We've occupied our prisons with more marijuana arrests than for rape or murder, aggravated assault, or even the unsolved robberies alone in our country because we are spending our precious police resources on the marijuana prohibition. And our history shows this is true. Historians now attest to the complete and utter failure of another prohibition in this country, which is a prohibition of alcohol. It arguably made people less safe. It led to more drinking and was a blow to our economy and the ability of our officers to do the job. It was even a blow to officers' safety and security. If we're serious about making our communities safer or stronger, families more secure, we should be focusing on how to undo the catastrophic damage of marijuana prohibition, not double down on it. I say all of this as someone who ran a police department in Newark. It was under my authority as mayor. My officers would talk about the churn of people they arrested again and again on nonviolent charges, which by the way, many of our law enforcement officers may have engaged in. Deepening the distrust between officers in the community for arresting people that people in positions of authority like senators and presidents had done themselves. I saw firsthand how the disproportionate enforcement of our drug laws made communities like mine over-criminalized and under-protected. Over-criminalizing possession of marijuana and under-protecting them on serious crimes. This is an issue which I know too personally. I've seen this from walking privileged and elite communities like universities, or here in Washington. And I know it because I may be the only senator that when I go home, I go home to an inner city community. I go home to a community where my census tract is about $14,000 per household. I love my neighborhood, I love my community, I love my neighbors, but it is outrageous to me The communities like mine and all over this country have seen the vicious impact of a war on drugs while other communities, elite communities, can brag and joke about marijuana usage that they've done. I'm proud that I've spent the most of my adult life working with the people of Newark, New Jersey, a city that's rich with culture, that's, that's rich with art, that's rich with civic engagement, but I know from Camden to Patterson to Passaic to Newark that there's communities like mine who every single day are getting the devastating blow of this prohibition, of this war on marijuana. I see the anguish people feel like the unjust and the unfairness of it all for having lives upended, for 
getting caught with small amounts of marijuana. I've seen countless people who couldn't find a job, a decent place to live, to support their families. I'll never forget as a city councilman in Newark waiting in line on the DMV and a guy comes to me and tells me the story that he was issued the uniform, he finally had a job that had a pension, that he could support his family, move out of a bad neighborhood into a better one. How he was so excited and then they ran his record and 18 years earlier, he had a non-violent marijuana related charge and they took it all away from him. Think about that comparison to the highest office in the land where marijuana, you no consequence. The hypocrisy of it all, the painful thing. And this isn't just a few people, this is tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Americans who are bearing the brunt of nonviolent charges for marijuana that have had their lives destroyed in that lifetime sentence of time and time again having to check a box about a marijuana arrest, having their uniforms taken away, opportunities closed. And I've seen how these laws make us less safe. When are we gonna get back to this understanding that we, all of us as Americans, put our hand on our heart and we make a pledge, we swear an oath that we will be a nation of liberty and justice, not for the privileged, not for the elite, but we will be a nation of liberty and justice for all. Countless people have talked about equal justice on the, under the law. These ideals and principles from this floor, they talked about it in the suffrage movement. They talked about it in the civil rights movement. It goes all the way back to slavery. Frederick Douglass, on the 24th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, made a statement that was as true then as it is now. He said, where justice is denied, where poverty is enforced, where ignorance prevails, and where any one class is made to feel that a society is, organized, is an organized conspiracy to oppress, rob, and degrade them, neither persons nor property will be safe. Well, this is the war on drugs. This is the marijuana prohibition. It has been a systematic oppression of poor people in our country. It has destroyed and devastated individuals, families, communities, cities. It has bled our national treasure. It has filled our jails to the point where we had to build more and more and more of them. It's taken away resources from investing in drug treatment or education, which we know not only drives down drug use, but empowers people economically. This is the war on drugs. This is the war on marijuana. Attorney General Sessions' policy, recession today will only make these problems worse. At a time that the majority of the American public agrees with me, agrees that this prohibition must end, the majority of the American people Understand that this policy makes our communities less safe, wastes taxpayers' money, wastes, makes it more difficult for police officers to do their jobs, and ultimately hurts the struggling folks at the bottom of the economic ladder most, and disproportionately affects black and brown Americans. That they are the ones that are bearing the brunt of our failure to get rid of prohibition. But let's be clear about what this setback is. The American people know the war on drugs has failed. They want change. Republicans and Democrats and independents and in states all across our country are making change. At their legislature, at the ballot box, voting in a repeal of these awful, unfair, wasteful policies. All across this country, red states and blue states, Americans are marching, are standing up, and are fighting to change these laws. And we know that states that have legalized marijuana have seen a massive increase in revenue, decreased rates of serious crime. Crime is going down in those communities. And they've been able to put the more resources to use in urgent, to address urgently, pu urgent public needs like education and infrastructure. In Colorado, Arrest rates have decreased and state revenue has increased. Washington, D.C., right here, 
has seen a 10% decrease in violent crime over the three-year period following legalization. It is time for Congress to step up to the plate. It is time for us to once again live up to our oath. It's time for us once again to fight to make our country a place of liberty and justice for all. And I know that right now, Attorney General Jeff Sessions and President Trump are standing squarely on the wrong side of history. I know what our ancestors have taught us about the arc of the moral universe bending towards justice. I know that this is not a matter of if, but a matter of when we will have sane marijuana policies in this country and end the prohibition that's destroying neighborhoods. I know these things, but how long? How long will people suffer? How long will we waste resources? How long will we make ourselves less safe? How long? This fight is more than about a substance, a plant, it's more. It's about the soul of our nation. It's about our ideals. It's about justice. It's about justice for veterans who rely on medical marijuana to treat their PTSD. They fought for us, they stood for us. And now, according to Jeff Sessions, their use of medical marijuana to deal with their PTSD, they're criminals. That's not the America I believe in. It's about justice for the man who has a criminal record for doing something that the three out of four presidents have done, who now can't get a job, can't get a business license, can't move his family into a better home. This is not justice. This is not the America I know we are. This is about that mother that I stood next to with her child who had Gervais syndrome, who fell into seizure after seizure, multiples a day, who was a marijuana refugee leaving a state that didn't end prohibition to a state that had medical marijuana laws. According to Jeff Sessions, she is a criminal. This is not our America. This is not the land of truth and justice to treat a parent like that like a criminal. This is about families and communities that too long have been fractured by the inaction of this body to address the overcriminalization of our country. This is about the very values that people fight for and stand for. This is about who we will be. We cannot fall into this nation where the privileged and the elite have certain laws and the poor and the struggling have others. What Jeff Sessions did today is unconscionable, unacceptable, and I will fight against it. Because when I go home, I see the communities in struggle. I can't turn my head and not understand that there are millions of Americans who are hurting from this decades-long war on drugs. This is a self-inflicted wound that goes deep to the bone of our country. It undermines our health and our well-being, and too many suffer because of it. We have got to fight, and I feel this sense of hopefulness because around this country, Democrats and Republicans on the state level are making changes. They're marching forward. They're undoing past wrongs. I feel a sense of hope and promise. And even though today we were delivered a painful blow by our federal government to cast a shadow against every American citizen who's using medical marijuana, every American citizen who is doing things that senators have done, I still know that truth will go marching on. I still know we're a nation of justice. I know we're better than this, and I know what our future holds. And so I ask my colleagues to reject this action by the Attorney General, to speak out against this devastating reality. There are senators here who represent states that the people have spoken. It's now time that we speak for the people. It's now time that we speak for our country's ideals. It's now time that we don't just speak the words of our pledge, but we make this country, in truth, a nation of liberty and justice for all. Mr. President, thank you.